Folks, you know, Best of Baltimore podcast needs the best, another Best of Baltimore person in the, in the show. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about real estate. You know, everybody wants to be a real estate agent. You know, does it, you know how does it take, how do you get to that point where you're selling million dollar homes, $600,000 homes? Today, we're going to figure out a little bit about that and learn a little bit more about that. I'm very excited to have the guest on that you'll see. After these messages, you're going to hear from Ms. Kelly Shute, who's doing big things in the Baltimore region. The No Picks After Dark podcast is fueled by Zeke's Coffee. Have you tried their coffee yet? I'm telling you, there's something different about it. Maybe it's because they roast their beans in a fluid coffee roaster, which provides the most accurate roasting temperatures and made with love. You will just have to check it out for yourself and try their delicious food while you're at it. Open now for curbside service, online ordering, carry out, and they also do wholesale. Visit Zeke's Coffee at 4719 Hartford Road. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 8 to 5 p.m. Kitchen closes at 3 p.m. Or visit Zeke'sCoffee.com and you too can be fueled by Zeke's. Are you or someone you love in need of mental health support? For All Seasons is now offering same-day therapy appointments with no wait list. Through the For All Seasons open access program, you can walk in for mental health services and begin therapy in the same visit. For All Seasons accepts all insurances and provides financial assistance if you need it. For therapy, psychiatry, or victim support, we have appointments available today. Call For All Seasons, 410-822-1018. Welcome to the No Picks After Dark podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Dante. Uh, another fabulous season. I'm so excited. You guys are listening. Season five. It is rolling. What an amazing season. Amazing guest. And today, I told you guys, I want the top of the line, the best is best, cream of the crop. And I'm so happy to get this person in the show. You know, I had a bag. I was like, I'm a fan of what you got going on. And I'm so excited. Miss Kelly Shoot, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. I'm so excited about you being on the show. You're doing so many amazing things out here in the Baltimore region. I had to get you on. I had to. Love to be here. You didn't beg that hard. I would love <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored to be here. You have such a good lineup every time. Your guest list is fabulous. So tell people a little bit about you. I know you are, uh, I'm going to make sure you got to get everybody to flowers. Owner and managing partner and associate broker of W Home Group of Next Step Reality and owner of Maryland's number one real estate team and name. Best of Baltimore Magazine, best 2023, right? Yep. Come on, we got to give people the flowers. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Thank show. Thank you. I had to make sure I'm I get... here every day. Hey, we got him the hype, man. We'll get you hype right now. But thank you so much for coming and hanging out. We're going to sit here and talk. Yeah. So that was a great conversation. So let's get a little background. I always tell people background about who you are. Are you from, are you, are you from Maryland? I'm from Maryland, yeah. Okay. I li- grew up most of my life in Montgomery County. Okay. Yep. So my parents moved there, I don't know, kindergarten, born and raised, and um, moved into Baltimore after college. My parents, being from Montgomery County, they thought, oh, she's going to move to Georgetown or whatever. Mm -hmm. I thought that too. Then you see how expensive Georgetown is, and you're like 21. You can't afford Georgetown. So I ended up in Canton. Never looked back. Loved it. Nice, nice. Which would attract you to Baltimore when you moved here? Because, I mean, like you said, you had options. You could have moved to Georgetown. You could live in Silver Spring. You could have lived... Uh, you know, uh, there's so many great places in the area. Yeah. When would it attract you to here? I love that you could get this. I mean, my house was sick when I was that age. Okay. We had the roof deck and the parking mm-hmm. and this cool kitchen and I had roommates and we could afford it, right? Like you could live this really fun life when you're single and young and you could walk to all the bars and the restaurants. Baltimore's awesome, right? You can't do that in a lot of other cities, definitely not in DC. So I thought it was like, kind of this hidden gem that I really wasn't as familiar with for living so close. And I immediately fell in love with it. I love to hear that. I love it. So like, what was your major back in college? Like, what was your major? Like what everybody, everybody starts one place and then you end up somewhere else. So I am not that story, right? My, um, I went to York college up in Pennsylvania. I was a mass comm major. My minors were photography and marketing. And my first job out of school was selling television advertising. It was like, out of an internship that I had in college. I like used exactly my degree for 12 years. 
Wow. Yeah, wow. until I got into real estate. I was, and I, I still use it all the time now. I mean, photography, marketing, communications, it's it's a lot of real estate. That's dope. Yeah. I've always yeah. wanted to be a photographer. So I admire photographers from the distance. I like right? the, what these guys do back here. I'm like, I wish I could do that. But it's definitely cool. Definitely a skill and eye set. It is. And you know what? Doing it for back then and a little bit professionally, I realized like I love it as a hobby. I hate it as a job. <laughs> do you still put the camera every once in a while? Do you it's st- rare. Come on. It's but never... you know, I mean, like, you, we all do now, right? Like right. Your whole life is on camera. It's just a little iPhone. It's a weird, a little bit different. It's a little, a little, weird, bit, yeah. little bit different. So, so you moved to, moved to Baltimore. You're like, all right. So you were doing uh, communications at that point, doing the yeah. And like, what was one of your safe favorite hangout spots back in the day in Canton? Oh my gosh. So we would be in the square every night. And I was just talking to one of my old roommates about it. We ran into each other. We would go out to Clotas and be there until like <laughs> 1, 2 a.m. And I would have to leave at 8 in the morning to go to my real job. And I would go like awake. No right. problem. It was not even like a weird situation. I wasn't even tired. I would just go to work at 8.30. <laughs> we can't do that anymore. I would die. We can't do that. I can't do that anymore. Like, that was just a normal Wednesday. I mean, honestly, I had, you know, just doing any events now, I'm like, I need like three days back. Like, like it's tough to I bounce back. I can't live back. like that. No, it's definitely hard to bounce back. So, you know, you've doing your marketing, working for firm, TV, TV and whatnot. Yep. What, like... Was your funnest part about enjoying that job? Like a little bit, just... Oh my gosh. It was back then. It was sexy. It was a cool job. So okay. I was repping like HGTV and wow. ESPN, CNN, Fox News. I mean, that's a good calling card. Anybody's mm. going to talk to you. And I was helping local advertisers, usually in the Baltimore, Maryland area, get on TV for the first time. Wow. So it's exciting. Like you're going to these local businesses and you're like, hey, I can put you on TV. And wow. you would see their businesses grow and you were a part of it. I mean, that was awesome. It was so fun. That's cool. That's yeah. when like TV was the thing to do. Yeah. And you had to be in the TV. You were like, I'll oh, see a picture on TV, yeah. you know? And you only had so many channels back in the day. And, and you could put people on that. And I was the person behind the camera, like coaching them. Hey, here's a script. Here's what you're going to say. Here's how you're going to do it. Putting commercials together. It was it was really fun. That, that was a fun job. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So how long did you do that job for? So I was there for 10 years and then I transitioned. I got recruited by the NBC affiliate here, WBAL TV. Okay. So I worked for Hearst there. And this is kind of like their baby station. They love the station in Baltimore. It was, it's their crown jewel of all of Hearst uh, network. So I got to sell with them at a really high level i was working with mainly ad agencies up in new york and la and got to go visit them a lot i was working with huge automotive brands and that was really fun but it wasn't the same as when i was in my prior job where it wasn't the local businesses you know now i'm talking Mm -hmm. like an ad exec about numbers and points and moving the needle and selling you know two more toyotas it wasn't the same as watching like these local businesses like who became kind of like family grow Mm -hmm. it was just helping like these corporate moguls but I still loved it. I mean, television is a fun industry. You are schmoozing clients at really high level fun events. It's a really cool industry and it taught me so much of what I know now. I I truly have nothing bad to say about it. It was a really, really fun time. And I I, I always thought that's kind of what I would do forever. I love that you said something that was very important. I I, I just focus on Baltimore and Mary City of Maryland is that you really help the small business owners. And I think that's very important because I feel like small business owners are the backbone of the U.S. And it's 100%. really important we support them. And I like that you were like, I'm doing this corporate thing, but I really kind of missed a little dealing with yeah. mom and pop, you know, um, businesses where I'm actually getting them exposure that they really need, right. that they couldn't help out. Did you talk a little bit about that? Like, what was one of your favorite, you don't have to name the client if you, yeah. if you don't want to feel to, but what was one of your favorite clients you worked with that you saw impact that really helped their business so much? Yes, yeah, so I did a ton of automotive, but on a local level. So these mm-hmm. would be like, think about like the big auto groups around here. They okay. have multiple locations, multiple brands, and they get pump in, pump out reports every month. So they see how many cars they have, how mm. many they're selling. You can literally watch the needle move and it's awesome. So you t- they, they trust you with a lot of money that they get from their co-op brands and If you can move the needle for them and see how they're selling more cars and you're helping them open up new locations, it's awesome. And a lot of these guys, they haven't been doing this forever. They're first or second generation. So this is new to them too. And they're generous with that. You know, this is new success for a lot of them and they want to give back and they want to be involved in their communities and they want to hire people out of college and train them and give them, you know, a lifestyle that they wouldn't otherwise have. Like, Automotive is a really cool industry for a lot of people, and I got a front seat to that. It's it's kind of something I wouldn't have known a lot about, um, and I loved it. You're teaching me now. You're teaching the audience now. It was fun. I like hearing about that. Yeah. I like hearing about that. So you went from that, and then what was the 
moment, there's always a moment where it's like a pivot. Like it's like, all right, uh, I want to do this, but now I'm interested in this. How yeah. did we pivot from doing sales? You're you're in New York. You're at the coolest parties. Right. You're to real estate. Right. What year did you start your real estate and what was the pivot? So it was back in, I think it was like 2017-ish. And I was up for this huge promotion. They were going to maybe make me this big management position at my current job. It was, it was up for grabs. And it was a lot earlier than I thought it was going to be in my career. And it was one of those, you know, when you're in sales, you become a sales manager, more pressure, more work, usually less money. Salespeople make more than the managers a lot of mm-hmm. times. So I'm like, I have this thing that I've been working for my whole career on a silver platter in front of me. Why don't I want it? Mm. And it was that moment of truth where you're like, okay, well, I could keep being a high-level salesperson, which is a great life, honestly. And I was tempted by that. But I was like, you know, I want something more. What is that? And everybody wants to be in real estate. Who doesn't? You know, I was watching way too much HGTV when I was selling it. Um, We had flipped both of the houses we lived in, you know, flipped it for ourselves, lived there. I loved that process. And I thought, I want to flip houses is what I want to do. My husband's like, we are not being Chip and JoJo. (laughs) I don't want to work with you. You're crazy. (laughs) He's like, go get your license and, um, you know, figure it out. I think he thought he'd like buy some time. So, of course, right. I like get my license. And I, at the same time, I had then met my now business partner. And I had worked to buy my house with one of his agents. It was a good friend, family friend. And this agent was like, you should really meet him. You guys have a lot in common. He's kind of the you of real estate. You're kind of the him of advertising. So, I meet with him and I'm like, I'm going to sell this guy some advertising, right? Like, this, before I leave, I'm going to get... You know, sell some advertising, yeah. get yeah. out of here. So we left our coffee meeting and I was like signed up for real estate classes and he's not buying any advertising. So not buying he won. Any. He won. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Round one. He won. Um, but the joke is he buys a lot of advertising now. Ah, got <laughs> we both you. do. So no, it was it was a really good partnership and it kind of was what gave me the foot in the door. He needed somebody to come in and help him with his branding and his image, and he didn't really have any of that. He was just quietly selling real estate. If I was going to make this jump, I needed a mentor who could teach me real estate. Mm. You know, I knew how to sell. I knew how to talk to people. I had a huge network by that point, but I didn't know anything about real estate transactions. Um, And I went into it. I knew he flipped some houses, so I told him I was interested in that. Um, I we didn't flip our first house together for a year and a half in. Okay. I I would send him options. Every other week. What about this one? What about this one? No, no, no. But I learned a lot. Like, this is why that's a bad deal. This is why the numbers don't work. This is why you don't want to flip that. Um, so by the time we flipped one, it was successful and it, it was fun. But wow. that's what I got into it thinking I was going to do. I like it. I like yeah. it. We're going to hold that note real quick. We'll be right back. We're from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Talk about the real estate game as we know it and how you have a passion. And again, when you watch their team videos, social media, they're popping, all right, folks? You really got to catch on to part two. Right back. These messages. When you give to United Way, your gift could be the first spark of something bigger. It can help someone find, interview for, and get hired for a job and provide follow-up services for success. It can break down educational barriers and give that extra help to a struggling student with in-school support programs. Give today. Spark something bigger. Hi, my name is Catherine Womack. I'm a former strategic intelligence officer with the U.S. Navy. I spent the last couple of years at U.S. Cybercom and transitioned from active duty after 15 years into small business ownership. I own and operate a digital marketing agency in the state of Maryland. So a lot of people approach me thinking that digital marketing is simply social media management or maybe doing Google ads or Facebook ads, things like that. But what digital marketing really is, is an umbrella term for a multitude of tactics to get small businesses found by the people who need them. I personally specialize in search engine optimization, website development with conversion architecture in mind. And what that really means is the people are going to your website and doing the thing you need them to do. And oftentimes it's requesting a quote, an appraisal, things like that. So there's definitely a psychology to website development. And we lean really heavy into the psychology of sales to get people to do the things you need them to do. 
A lot of times as a business owner, you haven't had the time to think about what your needs really are, what your challenges truly are, the, the sources of those challenges. I can guarantee you in most cases, it's not simply that you need an ads campaign, and that's where I can add value to your marketing strategy. And folks, we are back. Uh, we learned a little bit about Miss Kelly. She and I appreciate you coming on again and learning about the selling, the hustle, the ads sell. That's, selling ads is a hustle. Yeah. That's a hustle. Yeah. And you got to be good the gift of gab, I'll tell you. That's the gift of gab. It's a lot. And I, the biggest surprise, people always ask me, like, what was the biggest surprise coming into real estate? When I left advertising, I was one of the best reps in the nation mm. and pretty much everybody on my team was right. Like you had to be the best of the best to even have a seat at the table. So I came into real estate and I said to somebody, if I can sell eight houses this year, I can pay my bills. Like that's what I was mm. thinking. And I thought I need to be in the top 10 to 12% of agents to make it, to replace my income. Well, come to find out, there's 60,000 agents in Maryland. It's a 60-hour class that anybody can take and everybody does. And you don't have to be the best of the best. You know, like everybody knows a real estate agent. You probably, right now, if you're listening to this, you're thinking of two or three people that you know are a real estate agent, right? Not all of them are good. Not all of them are full-time. But you know a bunch of them because there's so many of us. So to actually succeed in this industry, you don't have to be the best of the best. That was my biggest surprise. It was like, oh, anybody can just sign up. You can just become one. So no, it's but, so different. So here's my thing. So shout out to Stephanie Barnberger. She's a friend of the show. Yeah. She's been on the show a couple of times. But to me, a good real estate agent knows their stuff. They can walk you through. They. I want the real estate agent to walk me through it where I don't right. know anything. Right. I want them to walk me through the point from A through Z. Yep. And if you can do that, I'm good. My, the house I bought recently, I mean... It's a positive show, but I would never use that real estate agent again. I'll go with that because it just wasn't, it was, she was pushing me to a townhouse mm -hmm. and I didn't understand why. Right. And it was just like, you're pushing me to this thing that I don't want. Well, you need an end unit. You need, I'm like, I don't That's want, what you wanted. I want a detached house, a single family home, a backyard, a garage and, and a driveway so I can put a basketball goal up. That's all I want. And Where did you end up moving? So I live I live in northeast of Baltimore. Love and that's and literally the you know, the crowd of the Cardinal Scent. And you're you you already know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> the first house I saw I fell in love. <laughs> see, it see, goes one way or the other. See, you either see one or you see twenty. <laughs> right. It was the problem. I saw the first house yep. and everybody's like, You can't fall in love with the first house. You can't. And I was like, Okay, like th this is where I'm looking. And then we I mean we looked, I looked, we went to Baltimore County, we were at Harford County, we were in Baltimore City, we were, because I knew I wanted to stay Northeast Corridor, but yeah. or I could go Northwest Randallstown towards Harford Road, you know, mm -hmm. out Harford County. Yep. I wanted to White Marsh, just wanted to look in these areas. Mm -hmm. That's where I wanted. And there's one house that I don't regret, but I wish I would have got, and it was in Owens Mills, but it was sell as is. Mm -hmm. And it was tough because the price that they were asking was just, I could have done it, but I just couldn't. It's tempting. Because it was, it, they were literally leaving the house as is. Like, bye. Bye. It was, and then what happened was, and let's walk, it's not about me. It's, Thomas, it's not my show, but I just kind of give you background. Yeah, no, I, I always love doing like, like, how, how do people get where they are? How do they get, but yeah. a little bit, let's, it's not about me. We'll talk about you, though. So, you are, you, what are some of the things, like your first house by yourself you sold? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that day? 
How did it feel? Like was solo you, you? Yeah, I remember it. Like it was the funniest part about this house was it was a Zillow lead that came in. We used to buy Zillow leads right. and that's a whole, I could have a whole podcast about that. <laughs> but um, it came in and my business partner couldn't take it. And I was still like training. I was still new, but it's an $850,000 lead. And he goes, you need to go take this. And I, I mean, I was really new. Like I didn't even have a nice car. Like I was just like starting out. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you need to take my car. He has this nice eight series. It's like, go take my car, go show this house. So I do, they buy it. It was one of those like fluke things. You never show one, you know, $900,000, whatever house it was. They don't buy it, but they did. So then I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm living a lie. They think I drive this eight series. Right. Now I got to borrow his car every time facts. I go to an inspection, a closing. I'm like, I can never live a double life. This is how I know. Facts, <laughs> facts. And it's funny. It was just like, I just will never forget that. And just like starting out and remembering, like you remember every single deal in the beginning, you know, they all matter so much and they still do. I still care about all of them. But back then it was like, you remember every detail about all of them. Now tell us why I always wanted that perception because I've had friends in real estate the car is very important. Yeah. Why is that? Why I, is that the image? Because I, I feel like I didn't I mean if I had somebody pull up a Camry, I wouldn't think anything of it. But I feel like, what? Why is that such a like? I think because I was interesting. You you took the A series for that. Yeah. What was so? What was, what's it was the price about? point of the house, right? Like Got you. it doesn't always matter. I think sometimes it can go the opposite way. You drive driving this really nice car, and you're looking at an investment property. They're like, oh, they can pay more for it. Right. right. So you got to be mindful, but. I think in general, our cars are our offices, right? Like you, you're, this is set up beautiful in here. You want people to feel comfortable. You want them to feel a certain way. Your car is your office. Mm. It's your car, your bag, your shoes, your outfit. That's all people are seeing. They're usually not coming to your office until closing. Facts. So the only thing they see about you is what you show up to a house in, which I think matters. I love that you say that because image is everything. Yeah. I really believe that. That's why you and I were talking before, you know, all my pictures I send out now, it's with me in a tux. That's how I roll. Yeah. Like, if I'm doing a live show, I'm wearing a tux. It may be hot as hell, but I'm wearing it because it looks good. It's image, and people yeah. want to see that person. Like, all right, this is who I'm looking for. Yeah. Now, with the real estate game, you sell your first house, you're moving, you're like, all right, I got it now. I'm feeling right. good. Did you go out and buy the A series right away, or did you hold up on, or were you still like, I'm rolling how I'm rolling? Like, as far as where people were like, did you feel like, did you were you in a groove after that? I feel like my first month, like my first 30 days in, I have put four houses under contract. And remember, I only needed eight to pay my bills. So right. I'm like, okay, we're on to something. I'm going to be okay. And that was the first time I took a breath. I was like, all right. And everybody around me is like, Kelly, you love selling. You love people. Of course, this is this is a natural fit. But when it's you, I think we all have a little bit of that. Right. What if it doesn't work out, you know? And so it was, I, I had that confidence. And at that point was when we started going down this path of, the W Home Group was in infancy. There was maybe two other agents on it. Next Step was not even really like on the map. Nobody even knew what that was. It was kind of just like an umbrella that we could do business under. And that's when we realized, hey, we're onto something here. Let's see how big we can make this. And I ended up buying into the team. James and I um, started that together, bought out his business partners in the brokerage, and we just started rolling. And it was like, all right, I'm going to sell houses. We're going to build this thing. We're going to teach other people how to do it. And we just never really looked back. It was not what I came to do wow. <laughs> at all. So the, what is the W? Is, was there a certain, was this a W or is there a word behind a W or what is, what's the meaning behind the name? Here? So remember, I came in to help him with his marketing. Right. His last name is Weiskirker. Uh, so I'm like, boyfriend, nobody can spell that. <laughs> <laughs> like our Google search is going to be all over no, the place. You like, can't. We got to, we got to, can we make it the W? It works for the hotel group. It Facts. can work for us. Let's, Facts. let's roll. Facts. <laughs> so we went with that. My mom was not happy. My mom's like, well, wh- why can't it be the K group for Kelly? I'm like, mom. We're, we're gonna have to the s group like my my name doesn't work as well the w, w sounds luxury sounds good it looks good on a it logo does. we're gonna go <laughs> it does sound good it does sound so this is in 2018 2019 yep. you guys so imagine it's 2023 right now but i remember seeing you guys on the mat that caught my eye bare before the pandemic yep and i was like who are they and what thing i do was i like to look at people from a distance before i interview them because you want to see how they move. You want to see, sure. is this where are they legit? Or are they just fly by night? Are they what they say they are? Right. Are they the real McCoy? Are they the real deal? And from my perspective, you are the real deal. And that's why I had to get you on the show. Thanks. Um, so your team right now, how big is the team? So we have, we always hover right around 20 to 25 people. Okay. That's kind of our sweet spot. Okay. We want it to be small enough where everybody knows each other, but big enough where we can make an impact. 
And is it, how do you guys select your team? Do you guys select them? Is there something, a criteria? Could it be, could I just go sign up for a class? And like, in. I'm here, You're I'm in. here. <laughs> like, am I in? Like, how does it work? I mean, I mean, I'm sure you yeah. want the best of the best, you know? That's how the W Home Group was formed. We okay. had Next Step, which is a brokerage, and we looked around and we're like, these other brokerages will hire anybody. There's brokerages around here. There's teams around here that have 200 people on it, right? Mm-hmm. They can't all be good. They can't all sell a, a ton. The one percent of all of the real estate in this area, or I should say, four percent is done by like the top 500. So mm-hmm. it's really not a big group of people that's doing a lot of the business. Um, so we said, what if we take all of the top agents and put them under one umbrella? We can go mm. further, faster together. We can help each other. Let's see how that works. And everybody, everybody was like, that will never work. Mm. Top agents don't want to work with each other. They don't want to work with their competitors. They will they will be so catty. It's going to be a bunch of backstabbing. Like, this will never work. And we're like, we disagree. We mm. think, I came from a background where I wanted peers. You know, when you're the best salesperson, you want peers. Mm-hmm. And you don't always have them. I don't want to be looking behind my shoulder to see who's going to stab me in the back. I want people who are helping me and cheerleading with me and we're going, we're doing this together. Right. And we said that we set that tone from the beginning. And in the beginning there was, I think there was maybe six of us, all women and James and everybody's like, there's no way you have that many successful women working together who get along, got along. Fantastic. Everybody supports everybody. And that's the culture we built from the beginning. So we're really selective. Culture is paramount. And they have to be really good agents. Really good agents that know what they're doing. It's our reputation. So I'll get emails from other brokers. Hey, we had multiple offers. We put yours at the top of the stack because we know you guys will get it done. You have a great reputation. Like, we want to work with you. That's all I could ask for. I love hearing that because one of the things I pride myself on is the teams, the people I put myself around. Right. And even you asked my guy, M. Soto, who's behind the camera right now. I had known him for six months, but we didn't work together. That's funny. Because I wanted to see how yeah. we move. I wanted to see what he could do. I wanted to see his work. I wanted to see what kind of quality work can you do. And then I said, when I, we can't join together, I was like, now we're in this together. Yeah. Now, now, we're, now we're rocking and rolling. This is, what we, yep. this is what we expect. This is what we expect. This is what the, the quality of product we want out there. And now we're all on the same page. And we were talking earlier, when you go out and you're just out and about living your life, people know you, they recognize you, mm-hmm. right? We're the same way. They might have bought their house with us. Their neighbor might have sold with us. Like, I care about how they represent themselves in their whole life, not just in a real estate transaction. When you're out the bar with your friends or you're grabbing dinner with your husband or you're on a trip or you're posting on Instagram, everybody's watching that. So it all matters. So our whole team, we talk about like being on brand. We won't hire people who aren't because we can't afford it. Talking about branding. I'm glad you walked right into that. I did. You walked right into branding. So I say, it's my first time doing an episode. It's my first time. But branding, your branding is is phenomenal. You guys... Take it up to a notch. So now, learning about your advertising background, it's all right. puzzle pieces all come together. Your brand is phenomenal. Thanks. Where do you get this inspiration from? Because you do some things that, that are different, mm-hmm. and it catches the eye. As we know, TikTok has messed everything up. People only have a attention span of 35, 40 seconds, and they're done. Yep. How did you figure that that with as far as reels, understanding, I we have to change for the climate. Yeah. We can't be the same way. We can't have this ugly steel picture. Oh, this is a rancher. That's three hundred three hundred dollars. That's four bedroom black. Yeah. But you don't do that. Mm-hmm. You might do it in the back and after you get them in. But how did you figure out? Let's change the game of real estate. So I think everything that happens in real estate on the East Coast starts on the West Coast. Okay. I look at that and study it, and whatever they're doing, we're going to be doing it here. Whether it's what color you should paint your living room to how we're doing social media. And I also saw it when I was leaving television. We used to sell, when I started, we could sell a minute. Can you imagine a commercial for 60 seconds? Mm -hmm. We could sell that. I sold them. 60 seconds of somebody talking about something. By the time I left, people were buying fives. So five seconds. Mm. Um, And the stations were having trouble keeping up with that because it messed up all their logs. But I realized people aren't paying attention for a minute. And this was back, you know, now it's like six years ago, but mm-hmm. I saw how things were getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And I realized the same thing is happening everywhere. People ha- people want quick information. They want access to it. And they don't want to talk to you. Mm. They don't want to talk to you until they want to talk to you. Right. So educating people, giving them access. And then you, you I watch too much HGTV again. <laughs> people like pretty people, pretty houses. Facts. And we have that all day long. So let's give the people what they want. Like Facts. make the houses look beautiful. You know, you don't want to look at a lot of clutter. You don't want to look at crazy paint. You don't want to look at people's personal details. You want something that looks like a really classy Airbnb. 
I can deliver that. I like that because I find myself on days like I'm home, I like going through Instagram and I like to go or TikTok and look up realtors. And I like to see like the vibe of like, right? I'm like, that house is sick. Like I want to show Sarah with four of my friends and those four friends are going right. to share with another five friends. Right. And it's always that, like you said, it's that pretty looking like catch your eye. Oh, wow. This is what it's all about. And so we set that up for people. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that you don't think about it, but you don't live the way that you shop for houses. Right. And it can be hard to explain that to an owner who's put a lot of care into curating a home that feels like them. That's not what a buyer wants to see. So it's two separate things. How you live and how you list are not the same. And if mm. we can educate people to list it the way that I know what buyers want, I can deliver that to them. Your house becomes my product, not the place you live. Got you. And that's a little bit weird of a hurdle to get some sellers over. But once you show them examples, they get on board. It's the smallest things, but we can make houses look phenomenal just with really minor tweaks. How did you guys, as a team, work the pandemic? Because at that point, yeah. I remember people saying people were waiting in lines to get see houses. Um, the market was real tight, not a lot of product, mm -hmm. not an inventory. How did you guys survive as a company during was, that time period? It was crazy. That Thursday, we got a call from our director of operations, a couple other people. Hey, everything's going to be shutting down on mm -hmm. Monday. And we went into an office. We called our entire employee roster and said, we are going to lower your pay by 30% across the board so that we don't have to fire anybody. If this blows over, we'll make you whole. All of them were like, thank you so much. We're in whatever you need, which was like, Phenomenal. it still gives me the chills that that's wow. how they responded. That was a tough call. Wow. Called all of our media marketing partners. We spent a lot on advertising, cut everything that they would let us. We said, if you let us cut this, because we don't know what's going to happen, we will be back and we'll spend again. Mm. Only one partner didn't, honor it we will not work with that partner to this day everybody said absolutely let me know what you need we came back so mm. we cut every single expense literally four hours in a room we just on the phone wow. we renegotiated all of our leases we wow. we didn't know what was going to happen <laughs> so then we thought all right we've got two weeks this is how we're thinking really like, mm -hmm. what should we do for the next two weeks we wrote a book we batched our Instagram content for an entire year. We redid all of our systems and we sent out our media team to do virtual showings of every single one of our listings. Mm. And we were like, all right, we're, we're done. We're all like, we're all caught up. What are we going to do next? And then it was like, oh, it's not two weeks. This is forever. Right. But we were the first team that came to market that said, we do everything virtually, mm. everything. So we had virtual showings, virtual, uh, virtual closings. We came to market with that literally on that Monday. We can do everything virtual. And um, we were one of the only brokerages that still had office space that was open. So we opened it up to other agents, title companies that needed it. We ended up recruiting a couple of agents because they appreciated that. But we had that flexibility. We we were really careful. We were really like, we cared a lot about the safety of our clients and our agents. But the truth was, people were in the middle of transactions. We couldn't stop it. So early on, they deemed that we were, you know, essential. Good. So we were allowed to work. Um, but we just use it as an opportunity to like tighten up everything. It was weird. Happy hour started earlier and earlier. I mean, day. I mean, it was weird. But I remember it was so hard to buy a house during a time. I mean, there are people, I remember one house in my block, there was a line to yeah. see it. And the, and, the, and the broker agent was like, the highest bidder. And houses were going like 20,000, 30,000, 100,000. more. Just yeah. more. Just like. It was stupid. I was like, I'm going to put a bouncer out at my <laughs> listings and just make like, put a put a little head charge. <laughs> make Seriously. Make some more money. Like, I don't know what to do. Were you guys busy? Like, mm -hmm. like to the point where it was like, was it surprising busy? Or were you like, were you, were, were you ready for it? It was shocking. And we didn't, we had no idea. So it went from being, we thought we were going to be shutting off. We didn't know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So we're calling everybody back. Thank you for being flexible. Here's a bonus. We made you whole. Mm. They, we want our advertising back. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. But, uh, and we had one of our best years. Ever. Everybody did. Yeah. Everybody did. They did. It was, it changed the entire market. Those rates dropping that way, like, I mean, it changed everything. What do you see now? The rates have gone higher. It's a little bit harder. What, how's the market? And then there's not a lot of inventory. So it's, it's like a perfect storm, right? Supply and demand. There's no houses. Rates are really high, um, so people still have to pay it. Right. And what's creating that is if you refied back down or you bought during that pandemic or a year or two after, your rate is probably like a 2.75 or a 3. Everybody's listening is like, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, 
you are not trading out of that to get no. a six and a half rate on a more expensive house so that your payment can triple. Absolutely Nobody's not. doing that. Absolutely Unless not. Unless you have to move. So life events, you know, some a parent has to move in, you're getting a divorce, your job is moving you. Those, we're still capturing all of that. And Maryland has a higher percentage of that just mm-hmm. because we have so many awesome like institutions and just where we're located. But if you don't have to move, you're like... I'll upgrade next year. Right. Kelly, who do you have that can put a pool in my backyard? Like, right. Kelly, who do you have? Do you have a good deck guy? I think we're going to expand, you know, and nobody's moving. And that's probably, like, I mean, I, I, my neighbors are like, we're not moving. Why would we're they? not, their interest rate ridiculous right now. Nobody's trying. So how is it, how do you approach a customer now? Will you customers that come to you now, are they, did they are, are they already programmed? Like this is the rate it's going to be. We know we're going into it, get into it. And then it's kind of like, that's that's what it is? Or how do you approach yeah, that? Yeah, and I'm kind of like being really proactive with people. If if you have to move and you're buying, I'm like, here's how much a monthly payment is going to be. And it's sticker shock, right? Here's what it's going to look like when we are pretty confident they're going to be in the fives next year. I mean, that that difference of a percentage and a half to two percentage, it's, it's going to lower at hundreds depending on your price point. So gotcha. if you can stomach that price point and it's a sticker shock and it, it's not great, if you can stomach that and just know, hey, I'm going to live with this for a year, year and a half, I'm going to be in a pe- better position when I refi right. back down. Once the rates drop again, you're going to see everybody paying way over. It's already competitive. It, it doesn't get better when rates go down. Right. So if you can get yourself in now and avoid that competition and just kind of suck it up for a little bit, I'd rather you suck up paying a couple hundred more a month than paying 75 grand over like we were seeing. Yeah. If, what's, if you can swing it. What's some, what's some of the highest markets in the area right now? Right now, I, the city is always a little bit softer. It's a lot. There's just a lot of inventory. Okay. So you have more choices. But I think the city's selling pretty solid right now. Oh. That ebbs and flows based on whatever's going on in the media. But right now, it's, the city is doing great. Um, Baltimore County, especially North County, like anything in the Hereford Zone Hereford or zone. anything up there, I mean, it's gone. Um, Towson's always really fast. I'm seeing a lot of people moving out to Carroll County. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Where I mean, that there? like Finksburg, Campstead, that whole like closer side of Carroll County. <sighs> Super hot. Same thing on the ha- Howard County side, like Sykesville, Eldersburg, blown up. What about Frederick? I, I see Frederick going yeah. big. Frederick's been big though. Like yeah. People have slept on Frederick for a while, but like it's always been moving. Now people are realizing it because you can drop right down 270 and do whatever you need to do. And it has schools that people like and all that. Frederick Urbana, that's always good. Good yeah. to know. See, I'm trying to educate the people. Now, I know before we roll out, people are probably wondering brokerage firm. Bro- what's the difference between brokerage firm? Like give it a good depth, like yeah. so you kind of so they kind of understand what brokerage firms do actually. So brokerage is kind of the umbrella. You have if you're a real estate salesperson, you have to work for a brokerage. Mm-hmm. If you're not a broker, so you know there's na- nas- national brokerages like Remax or Berkshire. Right. Those are all. There's also local ones. So we're a local. We're considered Maryland's local brokerage. So four offices in Maryland. We also have licenses in the other states around here, but. Um, it's, it's just more of a boutique feel. Gotcha. We didn't like the big, huge corporate vibe. But there's advantages to that, too. And now there's cloud-based brokerages. So you have, like, your EXP. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't even really have, like, a central office. They don't have physical offices. That's another option now, which is – that kind of came out of the pandemic wow. also. Like, what, would you, what did you guys learn as a team after the pandemic? Something that you guys are doing before but you don't do anymore. You learn after the pandemic. You know what the weirdest one is, which everybody loves, I think? Nobody sits around the closing table together. Like you have all the buyers, sellers, all the mm-hmm. agents. You sit there for an hour while everybody signs their paperwork. They don't do no more? No. Now the sellers pre-sign. Buyers come in later. Everybody's in and out in 15 minutes. I don't know. You know what? I I, I, do, I like the sitting down. Thing. You like, but, but Because like it's like I'm buying, I'm, I'm investing in something. But then you, if you can't What if the time. person who sold it to you was like difficult the whole time now well, you're sitting in this room facts. it's so awkward facts i'm like who's gonna yell at who facts facts you're right mm-hmm. good point so people like the, the like just the virtual thing yeah interesting it's, they just do it real quick and then they move on that's the one thing that everybody's like i think we can all agree that was a good thing. interesting Isn't that's that a, that's really cool such a random one i like hearing that i like hearing that we're so we're gonna do a speed round okay but before Nervous. that where can we find you on social media where can we find the company it's time to plug all everything you <laughs> got tiktok the x now i don't know twitter i don't know what it's called it's whatever you're but you're too cool for me i don't even know what half these are yeah, I'm just, you know, know I'm, it's just you got it's everything right now you you tell plug it so people can find you and find your team 
whatever it may be. Yep. So Sold by Kelly Shewitt is all my personal stuff. TikTok, Instagram, mostly Instagram. Um, our team, W Home Group, we have good content on there, fun houses. And then next up, Realty MD is the brokerage. That has more like brokerage, higher level stuff. So all of them are fun follows because they all have pretty houses. Gotcha. So speed round. This is always a fun round. All right. People want me to bring it back. I, I didn't know people wanted to bring it back, so I'm going to do it. People have spoken. They've spoken. I'm going to do it. Okay. Crab cake or crabs? Oh, crabs. All right, there we go. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Because like, you know what? You, take, you put your phone down. Now we're talking. <laughs> you got a crab cake. You're not going to eat my crab That's cake. That's true. I like the communication part That's of true. It. And like I'm old school. I come from where we didn't have cell phones growing up. So right. you had to have that conversation. It's better. There's no getting around it. Chicken wings, flats or drums? Oh, definitely drums. Okay, I'm a flats guy. I'm really? a flats. I'm because it's easier. It's easier. No, you gotta like push it through. No, you, I don't you, like that. Because then it's gonna be nasty. But you can put you can go around and hit one hit and you're done. That's a flat. That's a flat. It's, it's something about Maybe that. I'm doing it wrong. It's the, yeah. It's the flat. It's like one boom and you're it's just this gone. This is great. Blue cheese or ranch? Uh, both. Ooh, I'm okay. All right. All so right, but if I have to live with, only you gotta live one. one. You gotta ranch. live one because you can put it on more things. Okay, so all right. So I'm a blue cheese person. Okay. For wings, Definitely I could do wings. ranch for French fries and, and pizza. Ooh, I forgot about pizza. Yeah. Blue cheese is like I like I like the crumbles. You need the crumble. Know, the crumble you need the crumble blue with the cheese. Wings, definitely blue cheese. Like yes. you're not even gonna eat a wing without blue cheese. Yeah, you need the crumbles. Yeah, you need the crumbles. Okay. True. Your favorite, your top three favorite bands, music, dead or alive. It could be any music, any group, any genre. Oh, this is gonna be so cliche. I'm gonna get no, kicked off. No, you're fine. You're seconds. fine. You're fine. I love Taylor Swift. Nothing wrong with Swifty. Th- you know why? Nothing because I think she is like just an exceptional business person. Like okay. if you follow everything she does, it's crazy. It's like mind blowing to me. I think she's very creative. That's one. Yeah. Um, I grew up with OAR, so okay, you know, two. hometown. I, I gotta go with them. Third one, oh, man. It's probably the food fighters because he's from here. Oh. He's Dave Grohl's from I, Dave Grohl's from his area. Do, yeah, I could do some of that. I think probably I'm gonna go I've been listening to a lot of churches lately. Okay. It's like a fun vibe when I'm driving. Okay. Yeah. So what is your and then last the other's last mm-hmm. speed round question. What is your vibe when you for what song do you play before you see a, a, a client? Like, is there a vibe? Oh like, gosh. is there a song that you're like, I'm I'm locked in? Like, before I come in, I'll play a song. Like, sometimes I just have to put on like a little Eminem. There you go. To get like hyped. To lose yourself, right? Yeah, a little I, bit. I like that. I just got to get a little hyped. There we go. See, you're off the hook. Speed round. That was it. <laughs> But it's always fun to learn a little bit more about the person. Yeah, thing. that is a fun so, one. I like that. So, folks, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on this couch shoot. And hopefully we can do some cool, cool things later on. Because, again, they're doing big things. We want to celebrate. We want to support people who are doing amazing things in the community and the whole Baltimore, Maryland area. We definitely want to make sure. And then you guys are selling all throughout the state of Maryland, correct? Yep. And what, are you guys licensed in PA also? PA, Virginia, D.C., and Delaware. There you go. Yep. You heard it here, folks. Thank you so much. Thank People, you. you can find me at nopixatthedark.com. You know where to find me on IG, no Picks at the Dark. Hey, Baltimore's best. Four years in a row. Thank you, guys. Love, peace. We're out. What up, man?